Yeah, the U.S. Climate Prediction Center currently has the likelihood of El Nino conditions developing and persisting into winter 2023 to 2024 at 90%. The strength of the El Nino event later this year, though, that's crucial to understanding how our winter weather will be impacted. El Nino is the warming of the Pacific Ocean waters off the coast of South America. That temperature anomaly sets off a domino effect of climate impacts across the globe. El Nino impacts um, vary seasonally. And in fact, um, the strongest impacts for the U.S. CONUS are uh, in, in the fall and into winter. Dr. David DeWitt heads the U.S. Climate Prediction Center. The entity issued a El Nino watch last month as waters in the eastern equatorial Pacific Ocean started warming, signaling a change. The evolution so far of this event would be what I would call typical. And by typical, I mean that anomalies start, sea surface temperature anomalies start on the South American coast and propagate westward. That doesn't always happen. And so um, the models tend to do better um, when you get these Eastern Pacific events. The Eastern Pacific events tend to be stronger. They tend to have a larger impact. There is a chance that the models are underdoing the forecast, though. If, if, you, if you see the water off the coast of Peru, it's almost seven degrees above normal. That's incredible warmth. Pittsburgh National Weather Service lead forecaster Rich Redman is honed in on what the strength of the developing El Nino will be into the winter. Generally, in a, a neutral to weak El Nino phase, uh, we see a cooler than normal pattern in the Ohio Valley. Um, and again, because the subtropical jet is not as strong, um, it keep, the polar jet is able to make intrusions down into the Ohio Valley. A recent example of a weaker El Nino event with colder conditions in our area was 2014 to 2015. That winter remains our 13th snowiest on record with 79 inches total at the airport. November 2014, our eighth snowiest on record. We caught a break in December. It was our second least snowy with only seven tenths of an inch, but we made up for that in January and February. January 2015 is the eighth snowiest on record. February 2015, it is our coldest February on record, and it was the third snowiest. That winter season, December 2014 through 2015, is our sixth coldest on record. But there are signals Pacific waters may trend warmer, resulting in a more moderate to strong El Nino event by winter, and that would look much different in our area. If you get stronger in the El Nino phase, let's say you start moving into a moderate El Nino phase, then we do see warmer temperatures in the Ohio Valley. Again, the subtropical jet stronger, the polar jet can intrude as far south in the United States. And so we see a, dry, a warmer than normal and drier than normal pattern. And that's generally the risks we see with the El Nino pattern in the wintertime. The most recent strong El Nino influence winter was 2015 to 2016. The snow total that winter season was 49.9 inches. November 2015, our third warmest on record, and it's in the top 10 for least snowy Novembers with only a trace. December 2015 is the warmest on record and our third least snowy. That winter season, December 2015 through February 2016, it's our 10th warmest on record. We also had our fourth warmest March on record in 2016. So which scenario will win out? It's still a bit too soon to tell. As we move further along in the year, uh, we're seeing lots of discrepancy in the model data. I'm not sure exactly what it wants to do when it gets into the fall and winter uh, as far as how strong will the El Nino be. And that makes a big difference for what kind of weather we can expect in the Ohio Valley. Now, currently, the Climate Prediction Center says El Nino is likely to form between now and July, and data from the CPC suggests the chance of a strong El Nino event being in place, that's during meteorological winter, G uh, December, January, and February, is currently at about 48 percent. It's something that we will be following closely as we head through the year. Hi everyone, I'm Lindsay Watson. Thanks for watching the WKBN 27 First News YouTube channel. If you want more video news, subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the WKBN 27 First News app for breaking news alerts.